My channel is about robot vacuums, but sometimes things get in the way. Today that something is the Ezine G80 cordless stick vac by iLife. Now you might be asking, Mike, why are you reviewing a stick vac? Is it because iLife sent it to you free? Have you sold your soul to the corporate devil? Have you sold out? No! Not yet, anyway. As soon as I'm monetized, I'll definitely sell out. But in the meantime, I like this vacuum because it has some features that I've never seen on a stick vac before. In fact, one that I've only seen on robot vacuums, and that's a spinning side brush. Another feature it has is this easily removable main brush, which I'm also spoiled by and used to from robot vacuums. And it comes with this handy dandy cleaning tool, which we all know and love. Or at least know. Roomba owners are like, what is that? I don't have that. I don't even need that. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about this vacuum while I do a poorly implemented unboxing video. Now, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do these unboxings without appearing in the video, so I apologize for the out-of-frame content. At $140, the G80 solidly falls into the budget stick vac category, and it has some of the hallmarks of those vacuums, such as a low-torque motor, for example. It takes a while to spool up. It does have pretty decent suction power, but you have to wait a couple of seconds for it to fully power up. It comes with... Uh, Two brushes, two main brushes, a uh, carpet brush and a soft roller for hard floors. It comes with two attachments to uh, get into crevices and to do other things like dust and pick up larger debris. And a typical AC adapter charger that takes about four to five hours to charge. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is compare its suction power to a Milwaukee M18, which is a very beastly cordless vacuum. Keep in mind that the only value of these results is in how these two vacuums relate to one another. You can't compare this to, for example, a robot vacuum because you can't shove that tool directly into a robot vacuum suction intake like I'm doing with these two. And the reason it's impressive is because this thing weighs maybe a third of what the Milwaukee does. It's significantly lighter, even with all of the attachments, and I'm including the electric uh, brush roller. Alright, so let's talk about that spinning side brush. I'm not going to spill cat litter on my floor. Cat litter is disgusting, so salt will have to do. Now, normal vacuums um, can only get so close to something. Some, like Oryx, have a non-moving side brush that kind of sticks out and sweeps some of the stuff that is hiding in the corners. Uh, but in my experience, those don't work very well. Okay, so I did a cleaning pass with the side without the spinning side brush. So I'm going to come on the other side and let's see what the side brush can do. Now, of course, those of you familiar with robot vacuums are going to be wondering how far will it fling the salt, and the answer is not far at all. Look at it go. It gets really far in there. This feature alone is worth the price of this vacuum. Okay, time for the hard floor test, and I'm going to do my typical test that I usually do with robot vacuums. Popcorn, oregano, flour, dog hair. Um, I forgot what else. I think that's it. So this, I have to say this, um, well, don't lift it up like I just did, but if you don't lift it up, this is... A superb hard floor cleaner. So it's small and covers a small area so you wouldn't want to clean like a, your entire house with it just for that reason and I'm not sure the battery would last long enough to do that and I'm running all these tests on maximum suction I don't I don't believe in you know halfway steps it's all or nothing maximum power. Um, I have to say this thing is is a superb hard floor cleaner. I mean, look at this thing go. Any spots that it missed are spots that I missed. Anything that it went over, it picked up. This is a much better hard floor cleaner than any robot vacuum I've ever tested. I wish that uh, robot vacuum makers would include these soft hard floor roller brushes with their robots. So iLife, maybe that's your next project. I mean, look at this. It's spotless. And it really is mostly that roller brush, although this vacuum is designed fairly well and has pretty good suction. Really, really good results. Sorry, I have OCD. Got to get that spot. Anyway, it's time to prepare the carpet. So as I mentioned, it comes with two brushes, this awesome soft hard floor brush and a regular uh, carpet brush. And the carpet brush does pretty good on hard floors, not as good as the soft one, but if I had to leave just one, 
I take the carpet one because it, this, the soft one is really bad on carpets. This thing doesn't have the power to push it. And that's uh, one of the criticisms I have of this vacuum. Its suction power is pretty good, but it doesn't have enough juice to um, turn those brushes aggressively. So while it's superb on hard floors, it's only okay on carpets. It gets the job done for the surface stuff, certainly better than um, most of the robots that I have. But it doesn't really get deep in there and get the, um, the stuff that's embedded into the carpet out. And I don't mean like the deep cleaning stuff that you can't see. I mean stuff that you actually see stuck between the carpet fibers. So don't expect this to replace your giant 40 pound, you know, mega carpet cleaner 2000 or whatever it is you have that you clean carpets with. But for spot cleaning, it's pretty good. So looking at the results, if I ever get done playing with this thing, it's kind of fun to use. So I, I tend to linger in these tests. At this point, the carpet or rug rather is clean and I'm just messing around with uh, little side bits. So I'm speeding that up. So as you can see, you know, it picked up all the hair, it picked up everything on the surface. The only thing it missed are some little bits um, that, I don't know if you could see it in the video or not, I'm moving around too fast, but right there, that white stuff, you know, that's down in between the, the low pile bristles. So like I said, don't throw away your mega carpet sucker 5000. So this is the part of stick vacs that I hate. Ugh. And yeah, I know, I have to take out the garbage, clean my dishwasher, blah, blah, blah. Don't tell me how to live, you're not even my real dad. So another thing I like about this is that it's really nimble, which I think is fairly typical among the modern stick vacs. But what I don't remember being typical from the last time I had one is how far down you can go with it to get under stuff. Like you can put the vacuum pretty much almost flat on the floor. So you can get really, really far under obstacles. And that's, that's a, really neat, um, a really neat feature, I guess you could call it. By the way, that red spot that it didn't get, or orange spot or whatever, is like dried pepper paste, and don't worry, it's going to get what's coming to it. But yeah, look, look at how far you can get. And you could actually get farther if there weren't physical obstructions. Like, look at how um, the, that, the tube is almost parallel with the ground, and I think that that's really cool, because you can get under stuff you can't get under with um, big, powerful, and expensive standard vacuum. See, I told you it would get what's coming to it. Steam Blast is the best. Suck it, Vacuum Wars. It does work. Just kidding, I love you. So let's talk about some of the other attachments that it comes with. It's got this usual crevice tool, or whatever you call it, gap tool, narrow something, sucker thing, that gets into narrow spaces and sucks things up. Yes, it's very, this is a very, very scientific review. I, I'm, I'm a doctor. I'm not a doctor of anything. Um, so this other one's kind of neat. I haven't seen this before. It's got, it's a typical brush stuff, but you can retract this one and get a wide mouth um, sucker thingy. So let's, let's put that to the test. And this is neat. Uh, the brush thing I like, they're very useful because you could use them for dusting and like you can get into the crevices. See that, that white crud that was in there? Uh, still road salt that I haven't picked up and it took it out. So it's, it's pretty useful for that kind of stuff. And then if you want to pick up larger stuff, you retract the brush and then suck stuff right up. So now I'm going to do the hard floor test with this since it can suck up big stuff, but this was not very wise. And how do you know that this is made by a robot vacuum manufacturer? Yes, the exhaust. I wish more robot vacuum manufacturers would pay attention to where their exhaust goes, but this is not exactly a, a fair test because you wouldn't really use this to clean your floor. Um, so let's stop this nonsense and go clean something more appropriate such as uh, medieval armor that you may have lying around your house and haven't cleaned for a long time because you're too busy making videos. I'm sure everyone has one of these in their house and completely neglects it. And of course there are walls. Yes, I live in a log cabin and I, I don't know if um, dust on walls is a thing in everyone's house. I don't remember it being a thing in my old house, but it sticks to these logs pretty easily. So, my curtains get dusty too. Is that a thing? Do you, do you guys um, vacuum your curtains? Do people do that? Or do they just throw them in the wash? What do you do with your curtains? Let me know in the comments. I have absolutely no idea. I'm, I'm not good at cleaning. That's why I have so many robots. Yes, onto more armor that I neglected and is incredibly dusty. I should be ashamed to show this kind of stuff in this condition. And yes, that is a magnetic kitchen timer stuck in the back of the helmet. No, I don't remember why it's there. So since we're cleaning armor, we might as well clean medieval weapons too. Yes, vacuum all that dust. 
Wow, that's pretty bad. It, it's been a while since I've done any sort of dusting. All of the things will be vacuumed. All of them. Computer ports. And that's really what these kind of tools are, um, are good at, the brush attachments. Okay, enough of this silly tangent. So the question is, should you buy the iLife G80? Well, if you're looking for a very lightweight, very handy little vacuum to pick up messes on hardwood floors and maybe some carpet and rugs here and there, yes. I think it's really great, especially with that spinning side brush that lets you get into the nooks and crannies and corners. I don't think there's anything else on the market that has one. And again, this is a very inexpensive vacuum, $140. Yeah, I would buy it if I didn't already have one. But I do, and I'm not sending it back. Ha ha. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Mike, and this is Mr. Rumbato.